There have been many iconic figures throughout our history that have had a major impact on the future of the human race. Some for good and some for bad. During the 21st century, many figures emerged during and after the Combine invasion. Some aided humanity's attempts to drive them back, but there were some who chose to side with the Combine and hinder the attempts of humanity's natural instinct to survive. One of these became an enemy to the entirety of the human race as he actively worked against them to further his own agenda, believing a union with this alien empire to be the next step in mankind's evolution. Who was this man? What did he do to upset his whole species? And how does this story end? Here we explore in the lore and story behind Dr. Wallace Breen. Way back before the Combine invasion, the Black Mesa Research Facility was home to the brightest minds humanity had to offer. Located within the New Mexico desert, this top secret complex sought to expand and understand the vast universe around them using the advanced technology available to them. With the complex split into different sectors, each committed to studying their own scientific field and functioning of the facility, the dedicated scientists all answered to one person, the administrator of Black Mesa, Dr. Wallace Breen. Within Sector C of this complex, the anomalous materials team were tasked with analyzing exotic crystals taken from a border world called Zen. Using an anti-mass spectrometer, the team would agitate the exotic matter within these crystals just enough with beams of energy to create displacement energy. From here, the team could then study and analyze these displacement fields. Over time, this strong team functioned well under the administration of Wallace, four well-known members of this team being Dr. Eli Vance, Dr. Isaac Kleiner, Dr. Arnie Magnusson, and Dr. Gordon Freeman. Working in close proximity to his team, he befriended them and became well acquainted with their lives and family. As time passed, the anomalous materials team were given yet another Xenian crystal sample, GG-3883. Only this one came with pressure from Wallace. He asked that the team get him a conclusive analysis of the sample and to go outside of the standard testing procedures to attain it. It is unknown what great length Breen had taken to obtain this sample, but many now speculate he was given it by a mysterious government man who had been spotted on the premises that day. Noted to have been acting strangely during this day, Wallace ignored the fears of the scientists that warned of a resonance cascade occurring if the anti-mass spectrometer were to be used outside of the standard testing parameters. Despite this, he instructed them to boost the machine to 105%. As the unstable crystal hit the beam, it shattered, flooding the test chamber with exotic matter, triggering a resonance cascade ripping open an interdimensional rift between Earth and Zen. From here, portal storms ravaged Black Mesa and the rest of the planet, where many died to the Zenian lifeforms that had come here to form a new home. Within the facility, Wallace managed to escape the onslaught of Vortigaunt, Headcrab, and other dangerous creatures that would pose a threat. It is further speculated that Breen was recruited by the G-Man to pull off this entire situation as he was the only person with clearance high enough to set the parameters for this experiment and ignore the warning of the scientists. And aware of what was to come, he could escape with ease. Regardless of whether the speculation is true or not, Wallace managed to escape Black Mesa safely, but the Xenian invasion was just the beginning of what was to come. Over the following hours, Dr. Gordon Freeman stopped the resonance cascade, but he had disappeared during the event. Not many knew where he was now, but from later statements made by Breen, he at least had an idea. With Earth's armies now fighting the influx of creatures that had now made their way to Earth from Zen, 
they became weaker and weaker. Jumping from universe to universe, the Universal Union, also known as the Combine, had become aware of Earth's presence following the events of the Resonance Cascade. The portal storms that ravaged the planet would also give them easy access to the entire planet if they decided to conquer it. And they did. Having conquered and brutally assimilated countless species into their armies at this point, humanity would be just another species to adapt to strengthen their union. As the Combine struck, all of Earth's armies began to struggle, taking mass casualties only hours into the war it was clear that humanity may have met its match. Watching this occur, Wallace discovered a way to communicate with the invaders through an unknown method. Upon contacting the United Nations, Wallace was given permission to communicate with and negotiate a peace deal at any cost. The Combine had intended to conquer the planet and its population in its entirety, but humanity was different to the other races they had brutalized. As Wallace opened a dialogue, he offered a multinational surrender on behalf of the whole of humanity in return for their survival, believing this to be the only course of action available. In essence, saving them from mutilation and death in return for their freedom. To this, the Combine agreed to the terms, and on the seventh hour of this war, they stopped their assault and mankind submitted. As the Combine began a new phase in their acquisition of Earth, they rounded up its population into urban settlements where they could be controlled and monitored. Now seen as an established spokesperson for humanity, the Combine chose Wallace to become their puppet, to hold humanity accountable for their actions to keep this agreement in place. With this, they gave Breen the official role of Interim Administrator of Earth. Although Wallace had saved his species by negotiating this deal with the Combine Empire, believing this to be the only course of action for mankind's survival, many of his race accused him of rank opportunity and selling out his own race in return for favour with the alien empire. With his new role to keep humanity in line, Wallace became infamous, but as a puppet spokesperson for the Combine, he appeared on magazines, television and newspapers justifying his decision to the masses. He explained that he was a scientist and not a politician. He had only looked at the data available and made a decision based on what he perceived to be the best outcome. He had saved his species from total annihilation, but at the cost of their respect. Over the years, the Combine became more acquainted with planet Earth and subsequently made adjustments to the planet to make their occupation as seamless as possible. The Empire installed a suppression field across the planet to stop pregnancy from occurring to control the population and began to administer a memory-altering substance to the water supply. If humanity forgot why they hated the Combine, then surely they would become more submissive to them with unrest to all of these changes, Wallace was moved to City 17 by the Combine, where they gave him a home in the Citadel, a main base of operations for the Combine, to set up his administration. Reporting to Combine advisors, Breen would spread their propaganda using Breencasts, recording these from his office, where they would then be played to the human population. He would address the concerns of mankind in an attempt to keep them compliant, reading out questions supposedly sent to him by concerned citizens. Whether the population actually wrote these questions, or whether this was another tactic to spread combine propaganda, is unknown. While attempting to be as vague as possible to quell these concerns, he would always refer back to how their benefactors, the Universal Union, knew what was best for humanity. In the case of the suppression field, he explained that this had been put in place to teach mankind to ignore their most basic urges to evolve and that their benefactors would help them grow as a species instead, even mentioning the possibility of immortality with the right technology. All humanity had to do was comply and submit to their rulers as they knew best. 
It seemed that Breen truly believed that a collaboration with this multi-universal faction would aid humanity's progress in unlocking the universe. All he had to do was control the enslaved population using whatever methods he deemed necessary, even the torture and death of his own kind for non-compliance. With tough rules, basic rations and constant surveillance, some of humanity even chose to join the Combine Overwatch, the Combine's military and law enforcement on Earth in return for better rations and treatment. Also overseen by Breen, at its lowest level, its members would have their memories and minds altered. As they progressed through their ranks, they were adapted to become the perfect soldier for the Combine Empire. With Breen mostly in control of the general population under him, he also had to deal with a forming resistance against the Combine that grew stronger every day. As administrator, he decreed that any who chose to go against his plan for mankind and their benefactors would suffer a fate worse than death. Led by Dr. Eli Vance, a surviving member of the Anomalous Materials team in Black Mesa, the Resistance actively attempted to get in the way of Combine activity, recruit new members, and maybe one day, rid the planet from the Combine Empire. Having had Dr. Breen as his boss back during his days at Black Mesa, Eli held strong disdain towards this man, believing him to be the administrator of this vile business. Eli had been warned during the Black Mesa incident to prepare for unforeseen consequences by the mysterious government man wandering the facility that day, but his concerns had been ignored by Wallace and he had been told to continue regardless. With growing resistance activity, Breen would speak out against their work through Breencasts. Following this, his Overwatch forces would conduct regular raids on those suspected of being part of the Resistance, where brutal interrogations would follow in an attempt to gather more information. Although the Resistance did cause issues for him from time to time, Wallace had a secret weapon. He had managed to recruit Dr. Judith Mossman, a member of the Resistance, as a double spy. Using her knowledge of the Resistance and her bright mind, he could capture more resistance members as well as help the Combine with a problem they had. Even though the Combine had been able to jump from universe to universe with their advanced technology, they had not been able to master in-universe teleportation, but humanity had. With Aperture locked down and Black Mesa destroyed, Wallace could rely on Judith to use her insight with the Resistance members that had worked with and understood this form of teleportation, and in turn, he could use her to work on a teleporter for the Combine. To this, Judith began to help develop a teleporter using Resistance knowledge within Nova Prospect, a terrifying Combine prison where awful things happened to those who opposed the Combine. With humanity under his control, the resistance being hunted, and in-universe teleportation being developed that would help the Combine conquer sentient life at a faster rate, Wallace truly was in a great position. But one man would come along, and everything he had worked for would slowly begin to fail. On a standard day in City 17, Breen sat in his office and looked up to discover Dr. Gordon Freeman materializing before him, before suddenly vanishing. Gordon had been missing for 20 years after disappearing during the Resonance Cascade. For all the Resistance knew, Gordon had either died during his time in Zen, or he had not got out of Black Mesa in time before its destruction. But Breen was almost sure of Gordon's fate and where he had been. Aware that this long-lost, unaged member of the Anomalous Materials team now appeared to be a pawn to a higher power, Breen instantly makes contact with a Combine advisor to let them know of his return. The Combine knew of the G-Man and his employers. Whenever they would resurface, something big was about to happen. Gordon could be a signal for the Resistance movement, and if he were to help them, Breen's hold over humanity would suffer. With this fear, 
Wallace places the Citadel on high alert, naming Gordon as anti-citizen number one and sends out his Overwatch soldiers to contain the problem. Over the following days, Judith informs Wallace that Gordon had made contact with the Resistance and that he was on his way to a secret base on the outskirts of City 17. This one led by his old employee, Dr. Eli Vance. Having volunteered this information, Judith asks Wallace to wait for her signal before bringing Gordon in, with her main priority being to allow Eli to continue his work without interruption. Due to the pressure of his combine leaders against the wishes of Judith, Wallace decides to order a raid on Black Mesa East in the hopes to capture Gordon. Unfortunately, Gordon escapes, but his soldiers do capture Eli, where they send him to the Combine's brutal prison, Nova Prospect. Although he had upset his double spy, the capture of Eli was exactly what Wallace needed to display his dedication to the Combine cause, but this would only cause him more problems. He begins to hear reports of the death of his Combine forces and destruction of technology over the wasteland as Gordon travels across it. Gordon had become the free man, the person that would lead the way for the resistance where humanity could rise up and fight against their oppressors. All Wallace needed to do was take out Gordon and hopefully their revolution would die with him. As the hunt continues, Wallace becomes aware of an attack on Nova Prospect by Gordon and Alex who had travelled to the prison to free Eli. And so, his Overwatch soldiers attempt to contain the problem. During this altercation, Alex and Gordon become aware of Judith's betrayal. To evade this situation, Judith uses the teleporter within the facility to escape with Eli to the Citadel to safety under Breen's protection. As this teleporter was still in development, it becomes unstable and explodes, destroying the facility with it. Over the next week, many begin to believe that Gordon and Alex had died during this explosion, but this did not stop the revolution. The resistance instead took the destruction of Nova Prospect, a combined stronghold, as a signal to rebel. Over this week, the Resistance take over City 17, marching towards the Citadel, growing stronger each day. This only became worse when Gordon is later spotted alive and well, fighting with them, leading the charge. Taking his frustration to a Breencast, he asks how a simple, theoretical physicist had not been caught by his elite forces. The Combine had severely questioned him for his role in this, and in turn, he asks his Overwatch soldiers how they had failed him so badly. Furthermore, he fears that if the Combine were now to question the value of this agreement with humanity, would they still uphold it or simply choose to exterminate instead? As Gordon marches towards the Citadel, Breen becomes even more concerned, now addressing Freeman personally through public Breencasts. He accuses him of throwing away all of the progress that the Combine had brought humanity, that the revolution would only lead to the death and limitation for mankind, leaving it to plunge into freefall. Continuing to push that humanity needed the Combine in order to survive and grow, in a last ditch effort, he pleads with Gordon to help him gain back humanity's trust for the Combine by surrendering. Ignoring Breen's requests, Gordon marches to the Citadel with the growing Resistance members, taking the city by force, hoping to free Eli and the newly captured Alex. Over time, Freeman enters the Citadel and during his time inside, he somehow traps himself inside of a Combine detainment cell, now en route to Breen's office. Now with Gordon, Eli and Alex in his capture, he could breathe a sigh of relief. In his victory, Breen berates and mocks his captives. In return, Eli accuses him of indescribable evil, genocide, and that what he had done to humanity was simply beyond words. Regardless of this, Breen orders Eli to tell the resistance to stop their fight, but he refuses. 
To this, still attempting to control the situation, Wallace resorts to threatening Eli's daughter, Alex, if he does not step up and do the right thing, in his eyes, for the future of humanity. Aware of Gordon's services being useful to those that controlled him, at this time, currently the G-Man, Breen sees value in Gordon's skill set. In his words, a fine pawn whose services would be open to the highest bidder. With Eli refusing to do anything for Breen or the Combine, the administrator then threatens the resistance leader with off-planet relocation on the Combine overworld. With this, Judith calls out Wallace. He had agreed not to harm Eli, but now he was going back on their deal to acquire a better one with the Combine. Speaking down to Judith, he explains that she was bright enough to finish the work herself, and she only wanted Eli to stay safe because she had feelings for him. It is unknown if he truly cared for Judith, or whether he had just used her like he had done with the rest of his species. In frustration, Judith decides to turn on Wallace. With his manipulation, he attempts to convince her to stop, but she had finally found her voice. Using Alex's multi-tool, Judith frees the prisoners and locks the door to the office, stopping Breen's personal guards from entering. In this chaos, and feeling betrayed by Judith, he picks up Gordon's supercharged anti-gravity gun and fires. With everyone around him disorientated, he makes his way for the elevator to escape. On his way up, Breen thinks about all the resistance members waiting just outside of the citadel, ready to storm it and take him out. Trapped, he contacts a Combine advisor where he asks for safe passage from the citadel. In response, the advisor offers him a host body on the Combine homeworld, to which, at first, he asks to be sent elsewhere. However, with Gordon and Alex on his tail, he accepts. All he needed to do was reach the portal. As the portal opens and Breen rides the lift up to it, Gordon takes it upon himself to stop the interim administrator from escaping. Slowly ascending with the high-tech elevator, Breen mocks and continues to explain that humanity needs the Combine as Gordon fires energy pellets at the dark fusion reactor powering the portal. And then, boom. With a giant explosion, the dark fusion reactor lets out a huge wave of energy, destroying everything around it, closing the portal to the Combine overworld, dropping Breen into the depths of the citadel below. As he falls, he shouts to Gordon, the man that had caused him all of this trouble, his final words being, you need me. Having fallen so far since his initial attempt to save humanity from extinction at the hands of the Combine Empire, Wallace Breen had lost his way, and now his fate is unknown. Although he had fallen into the depths of the citadel below, throughout his life, Breen had shown his ability to adapt and survive in the worst circumstances. Furthermore, each time, he had leveraged these situations to barter himself a better position than he had been in before. He had managed to become the head of one of the world's leading scientific corporations, survived its disaster, and then became a representative for humanity. Was Wallace truly a bad person, or simply doing his best to save his species from extinction, no matter the cost? What is known is that he did see a bright future for humanity's evolution with the help of the Combine, but his vision was not shared by the rest of his species. If Breen's plan were to succeed, humanity could have essentially become immortal, stronger, and more efficient with Combine technology, but this would have come with the cost of what it meant to be human. If Breen is dead, Few will mourn his passing, but his fall was just another domino in the Resistance's effort to remove the Combine occupation from planet Earth. As this video is about Wallace, I have to mention Breen Grub, which I am writing a full episode on. Breen Grub was initially a Twitter account created by Valve writer Mark Laidlaw. 
From 2012 to 2014, it essentially told the story of Breen waking up in a new body. Through 180 tweets, Breen knows his situation, attempts to contact the resistance for help, and then becomes obsessed with discovering their location, likely for nefarious purposes. It's a whole ride that I will dive into. Breen Grub was also featured in Mark Laidlaw's Epistle 3 in 2017, a sort of Half-Life 2 Episode 3 fanfic. In this, a version of Breen, unaware of all of the evil he had done, began to understand his surroundings and would later plead for death from Gordon and Alex. These two iterations of Breen Grub showing up suggest Breen did die during the Citadel incident, and the Combine used some sort of backup of his memory to bring him back in a new form. As an official sequel to Half-Life 2, Episode 2 has never come out. All we have is Epistle 3, but does it count as canon? Wallace is a fantastic example of how to make a player truly unsure of a character's motives. Even now, I am unsure if Wallace really wanted the best for humanity, or if he was just looking out for himself. His need for this union between the Combine and humanity to succeed is, I guess in a way, noble. He wanted not only the survival of humanity, but also the evolution of the species. I disliked Wallace during my playthroughs, and after doing this additional research for this episode, I have seen a different side to him. After also looking through the speeches of the G-Man, it appears that Wallace Breen was absolutely aware of his existence, and may have even been hired by, or was a victim of him too, during the Resonance Cascade. If this is true, I have found a newfound respect for the character. This was the lore and story behind Dr. Wallace Breen. If you enjoyed this episode, I would really appreciate it if you could leave a like and a comment on your thoughts. It does help boost the algorithm. Finally, I would also like to thank my patrons who are on the screen now. You guys really are the best. I really appreciate you. And just a quick shout out to my gold tier patrons. Jonas, Lewis, Queen Arby, and this week, we're welcoming Fluffy the Dragon. Welcome aboard. Thank you so much for the support, guys. I, I really do appreciate it. I have also added YouTube memberships for any that do not want to create a Patreon account. The benefits are very similar. What did you think of this lore? Did you think Dr. Breen was a bad guy? And do you personally consider Breen Grub to be canon? Let me know in the comments below. That was everything I wanted to cover in this video. Now Resistance member, enjoy your day. Bye.